So in this video, what we're going to do is recap the Ponchon Savre method. Okay, so this is another method like the McCabe Till method for analyzing binary distillation. Okay, but there's some advantages over the McCabe Till method in the fact that some of the assumptions we had to have in the McCabe Till method we don't need in the Ponchon Savre method. So, for example, in the McCabe Teal method, we had to make the assumption of constant molar overflow. We don't need to do this for the Ponchon Savre method, so therefore it works for more different systems. We also had to make the assumption of parallel enthalpy lines for the McCabe Teal method. But again, with the Ponchon Savre method, we don't need to make this assumption, so therefore, we can have more systems that this method will work for and give a more accurate result. The one assumption we do still have to follow though is that for this system it's adiabatic and isobaric, okay? And that means that we've got no heat losses within our system and our pressure doesn't really change within our column. So exactly like we did with the McCabe-Teal method, what we can do is we can start looking at a balance around the top of our column. So if we have a balance, this will be our boundary that we need to take for our system. And what we have is we can look at a total balance for our system. And of course, what we've got in is we've got Vn going in. So the vapor flow rate on our tray N entering. And what we have leaving is we have our Ln plus 1 leaving. And we also have our distillate flow rate leaving. We can also do the same based on a component balance. And of course, in this case, we've got our Vn entering, but it's at composition Yn. We've got our Ln plus 1 leaving our system, and that's at composition Xn plus 1. And of course, we also have our distillate, and that's at composition Xd leaving our system. So now the difference is that for the Ponchon Savre method, we also look at an energy balance for our system, okay? So what we have entering our system is we have the the energy from our va for our vapor from tray N that enters our system and what leaves is the energy in the liquid from tray N plus one and also we've got that from our distillate but not only that we also have the energy that we remove in the condenser so what we can do because our condenser duty is also related to our distillate flow rate what we can do is we can define this new parameter so we can define the enthalpy the prime of our distillate and we can say that that is essentially the energy we remove from the condenser divided by the distillate flow rate plus our enthalpy of our liquid distillate composition and that means we can rewrite our energy balance as simply as the vapor going in our liquid coming out of tray n plus one and our distillate flow rate and this new HD prime parameter. So to this expression here, we can substitute our total energy balance into here. And in that case, what we can say is that our Ln plus one plus our D times by our vapor enthalpy is equal to our liquid enthalpy plus again, our distillate value and we can also re we can then rearrange this and combine our our liquid flow and our distillate flows so we have ln plus one and it's the difference between our vapor enthalpy and our liquid 
and the trays and we've got our distillate the difference between our HD prime and our vapor enthalpies and then we can write this as the ratio of the flow rates of a liquid to the distillate is the ratio of these two enthalpy dis differences So we can do the same with the component balance so that we just wrote on our previous page. So we can substitute again our total balance in for our vapor flow rate. And then And then again, we can rearrange and get our LN and our D. So we've got our LN plus one. And that's the difference between our vapor composition on tray, what? on tray N and our liquid composition on tray N plus one. And we can do the same for our distillate, which is the difference between the distillate composition and the Y vapor fraction on our tray N. So again, we can get the ratio between the liquid to the distillate flow rates in terms of these compositions. So what we now have is we have two expressions for the ratio of the liquid flow to the distillate flow. The first one we had was in terms of the energies and this one we have is in terms of the compositions. So if we remember from before, we could also say this in terms of our energies. What we can now do is rearrange this slightly so that we can say this that our parts to do with our distillate flow on the left hand side and our parts to do with our tray N, the right hand side. With an equation of this form, it's actually the same for a straight line. And what we have is we have coordinates on our line as these pairs here, okay? So what we actually have defined is an equation and we know that X D and our H prime D, our Y N, and our HVN and our X N plus one and our HLN plus one are all on the same straight line. Okay, now what we can do is we can also define exactly the same for the bottom of our column, define this sort of new parameter, this HB prime which is actually our, our liquid enthalpy coming from our bottom product minus our reboiler energy divided by our bottom flow rate. And this means in exactly the same way as we did for the top, we can derive an expression that's HVM minus this H prime B over our Y, M, so that's our vapor composition on tray M, minus our liquid composition coming out of our reboiler, and then our vapor entropy on tray M, minus our liquid on tray M plus one, and that's our vapor composition on tray M minus our liquid composition on tray M plus one. And then in the same way as we did before, again, we've got these pairs of sets of coordinates in such that we've got our exit material coming out of our, as our bottom product, our vapor composition on our tray M and our liquid composition on our tray M plus one, all to be also on the same straight line. 
So the one thing that we need to do is also, as we did with the K2 method, think about the feed. So in this case, we think about the feed slightly differently. So what we can do is we can go back to an overall mass balance for our complete column. So that's taking our whole column into account. And we can do that as a total mass balance. So we know that our feed in must be equal to our bottom products plus our distillate. We can also do that on a component balance so that we know the feed in of a particular component must be our bottom product anti XB plus our distillate and our composition of a distillate. This we can then substitute in our expression for F from our total mass balance as we did before. And then we can rearrange this for our bottom and our distillate. And then again, get our same ratio for B over D. And that's our XD and our ZF minus XB. Okay. Now, as we did before, we can also do this for an energy balance. So in this case, what we've got coming in is we've got our feed with the enthalpy of our feed coming in. We also have coming in the energy that we're putting in from our reboiler. And then what exits, we have our distillate and our enthalpy for the distillate. We have our condenser energy exiting and we also have our bottom product stream exiting okay so using the definitions that we had before for uh, hd prime and hb prime we can rewrite this expression much more easily in terms of those components This allows us to substitute in for the feed from our total balance again. And write that as our ratio B over D. That's our H prime. Okay. And again, just as we did before, we can actually com compare the ratio of B over D in terms of our composition to the ratio of B over D in terms of our energies. So these two ratios of B over D we combine and we can get XD minus ZF, ZF minus XB, so our composition ratio basis, and our H prime D minus HF over HF minus H prime B, so our energy basis, and then we can rearrange these as before and get our HF minus H prime B over ZF minus XB equals H prime D over minus HF divided by XD minus ZF, and then as we previously done, we've got our coordinate pairs which means that we've got ZF and HF which is our feed, our XB, our H prime B which is our bottom product and our XD and our H prime D which is our distillate product and what we can do is we can refer to these as our F point we can refer to our bottom product essentially as our operating point for our reboiler and we can refer to our distillate as essentially our operating point for the condenser. Okay, and all of these are on the same straight line. And what we'll now do is we'll see how we can actually use these three key positions here and the knowledge of the balances we've just derived to actually define and work out the number of stages we need for our distillation column. So let's just rewrite those 
three key points. So we've got our condensed operating point, which is our XD composition and our entropy of that. Reboiler operating point. and our feed operating point. Okay, so what we need now is we've got two graphs. So first of all, we've got an X, Y diagram, just like we had before, but now we've got an X, Y versus enthalpy diagram as well, with our top line here being our enthalpy of our saturated vapor, and the bottom line here being the entropy of our saturated liquid. Okay, so what we can do is we can start to draw these points on this diagram. So the first point we actually need to think about is our xd h prime d. Okay, and we need to think about what that value is. Okay, so if we actually think about a, a mass balance around the top of our column, we know that our vapor flow rate into our condenser must be equal to the liquid flow rate returned to the column and the distillate. Okay, and of course, we know because we've already previously defined a reflux ratio. Okay, and that reflux ratio. is the ratio of a liquid returned to the column divided by our distillate flow rate. So that means we can substitute that expression into this and say that our vapor flow rate is our reflux ratio plus one times our distillate flow rate, okay? Now we also know that the condenser duty is equal to our vapor flow rate times the difference in enthalpy of the vapor to enthalpy of a liquid. And that's because this is a total condenser in this case. So we can substitute our expression for V into here and have R plus one, the difference in enthalpies times our distillate flow rate, okay? So that means that our QC over D is equal to R plus one HV minus HL, okay? And that means that our HD, which we know is equal to HV plus QC over D is equal to R plus one HV minus HL plus HV. Okay, so that allows us to position our, our PC point on our, on our top diagram because we know, of course, our XD composition because that's the composition that we're specifying to leave our system. So for example, let's take that point to be this point here. So that's our PC point, okay? Now the next point we know on our diagram okay, is our feed point, okay? So our feed point can be whatever composition of our feed is and the enthalpy of our feed, okay? So in this case, let's just say that we've got a feed point that's here, okay? So this is our feed point. Now, the interesting thing about that feed point is this is actually will be a feed that's a mixture of a vapor and a liquid flow rate. And then, because we know what our, our XB composition will be, because we've specified that, so in this case, let's say that our, our, our XB is this composition here, then what we can do is draw a straight line from our PC through our F until it meets 
at XP. And then that is our reboiler operating point. Okay, so that draws our key operating points on our diagram. So the next thing we want to look at is how are we going to draw our stages on our diagram. So what we do is, is we make use of our XY diagram below. And we know that what happens is we've got on our top tray, we've got our vapor, okay, in equilibrium with a liquid. So we can get our composition by going down to our XY diagram and finding the relevant liquid phase that's in equilibrium. And then we can then draw this back up to our line. Now what we've done there is we've drawn our equilibrium. Okay. So now we can draw the operating point. So we use our operating point point and we join this equilibrium up with our operating line like this. And that then gives us our new vapor composition. And we can repeat that same process we've just done. So first of all down to our XY line, then across based on our equilibrium point and then up to our HL line. Okay. Now in this case, what we've done is we've passed our feed point. So because we've passed our feed point, we now move on to the operating point for our reboiler part of the line. And then we would continue our process repeating this for all of the stages until we had ended up with a liquid composition that was less than our specified bottom product composition.